Right, today's in the spotlight is the outstanding China White. Massive things happening for them, so we're going to find out where they've come from and where they're going to. So you guys are the um, founding members of the, the, the band, which has around about seven members. Yeah. So how did you guys get started in music initially, yourselves, personally? Personally, it was, um, I suppose, being a kid. My dad introduced me to bands like Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, and just, it just turned, music turned me on in a way that nothing else did or ever has, really. So. I was naturally drawn to music and I was in and out of bands throughout my teens and then I met Anthony when I was about 20. Um, we got speaking in a local pub, the Barley Mall. Yeah. And uh, I'd been in a fight, I had my head kicked in so I had all big black eyes, broken nose and he got, must been attracted to the Muppet in the corner. Like, a bit. And we just got talking about um, influence and stuff like uh, Pink Floyd and Primal Scream and stuff like that. Started jamming in his shed. Right. And the rest is history, really. You know what I mean? From there. Yeah. So, what was your part before you, 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 you two met? Before we met, we were just, we were just uh, messing around with music, you know, all different instruments and stuff like that. Just get, basically getting into making music and writing songs and stuff. And when I met Liam, we had the time we had the same mutual respect for music, we had the same vision, so we sort of hit it, off from, hit it off from there and hit the ground running, really. So, what were your musical influences and inspirations at the time? Um, nah, I grew up listening to rock music like, like Liam did, and then I went from rock music to hip hop and house to indie, and that's when I started to pick up instruments from there, really. We just bounced off each other, me and that, really, because like, when I, when I met Anna, I was a uh, bass player. Right. I was, in, I was a bass player in most of the bands that I was in, and Anna was a guitarist. And I'd been in the band for quite a long time throughout the teens, we'd split up, and it's a bit lost, really. We, we, me and Anna met each other at a kind of crucial time in our lives. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. And uh, Ant was into like the Stones and um, into a lot of rock and roll, you know, and I was into stuff like Massive Attack and Tricky and things like that. Yeah. And we both, I suppose. We just, so we get, every week we'd just turn each other with turn each other on to different bands and, and albums, you know. Like, yeah, this and yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It was an exciting it, time. It was, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like a liberating period of our lives, really. You yeah. know, went from being grey to multicolour pretty quick. <laughs> so you, signed, you then mashed things together. Yeah. So how did you take the leap from there to then form the group China White then? Well, I said to Ant, we've got to get out of the shed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we're, we're not going to get any far in, we're not going to get far in the shed. Yeah, um, so. That's what happened. We just started. That you know, I, I knew a few local musicians from being in um, previous bands. We started jamming and stuff like that. And it, it's always been looked upon China White. I suppose because for long periods of time, even now, China White has always been looked upon as me and Anthony. Right. Okay. So, but when we're out there, it's a band. It's like a collective, and there's been a lot of different members, collaborators come and gone over the years. Um, I, I think at the moment it's the most stable, established, you know, yeah, China White yeah. that we've had, you know what I mean? It's, it's, more, it's a band now as opposed to a collective. And then, so that's been around about five years, but in the last two years things have really exploded for you guys. So, so yeah. what's happened or what's been the highlights in the last couple of years then? We start, Every day. <laughs> yeah, it's been mad, it's been a journey. We, we was over in, um, in West Hollywood with Danny Saber, and we were uh, sort of headhunted. See, we had a we had a we had a hit list me and Ant when we started off with people we wanted to work with. It was right. like, do you know, like a fantasy football league? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we had a fantasy football band, <laughs> and uh, we went we went through each person. And we slowly ticked them off, and we wanted to work with Danny Saber. And we did. We went over to LA, worked with him, and then a couple of the tracks we've done have been signed out there, which is our first sort of. US release, international release, and they're out there right. on Sabre Bites and Kermit from Black Grape is one of the tracks. I think it's just, I, th I think going over there and working with Danny, the um, the profile of the band sort of really exploded. Really exploded, yeah, yeah def especially in the Northwest, you know, it's really sort of took off and people started taking notice, you know what I mean? And we come back and we was working with Keith, Keith Allen in the summer, and um, he did an Olympic opera. Called Will Cliff be there? <laughs> and um, we worked on tracks with Keith, and then we did a mini tour to sort of promote the album. And we were part of Fat Le Fit Les, it was, because Fat Le Les got in uh, shape for the Olympics. Oh, yeah, so we did a little tour with him, and yeah, things have just gone from good to better. So, what's that experience been like for you then, working with some of these names that you'd um, looked up to in your youth? It's great, it's been really good, but it's like 
didn't phase us, you know what I mean? It was just natural to be working with these people. You know what I mean? I think... It was inevitable in a way, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was yeah. just, it's just one of them things, you know what I mean? It's not being big headed or anything, but it was just sort of... It just felt natural, you know what I mean? It was, it was just the right place at the right time. That's brilliant. So one of the things is with all of this happening for you guys, and all the experiences you've had, what would you say is the thing that you're aiming for is the next stage now? You've just been in tour, you've, you've been yeah. um, doing a Liam Gallagher um, tour. Yeah. So what's next for you? No, I'd like to finish our album. I think we, you know, we've released EPs, we've had tracks out, remixes, we've done stuff for other people, producing and remixing stuff. I think it's time for the China White full album to come out. So I'd like to think maybe the, the back end of this summer we can really take a few months out and get our album finished. You've been in music yourselves together for on about nine years and mm. then China White uh, after that now. And now things are actually taking off for you. What would you say is the thing that motivates you to keep going though over those years when it's difficult? So what would be an inspirational message for anybody else who's in their hard graft now? The hunger. You see, because I think a lot of um, young bands get into this game and they expect over... They only get into it for the wrong reason. I'm not saying all of them do, but a lot of them do, especially now it's changed. Because you have the X Factor and you have all these celebrity-driven talent shows and stuff. And it's a myth, there's, you know, there's, there's a very small minority that get overnight success. Yeah. You've got a... There's no quick way to get what you're trying to do. Even just to get recognition is a hard graph, never mind to make money from it. Yeah. Um, and what happens is people, you know, being a musician or any sort of creative artist, it's a very hard way to make a living. So you've just got to stick to your guns and don't get in it for the wrong reasons so you can walk around town sitting in a band. Yeah. It's, it's not what it's about. Yeah, what would you add to that? This is dry, you know, and the main thing is what we're doing is we want to get paid for something that we want to, that we enjoy. You know yeah. I mean, we're creative people, you know, we don't, can't set a building site because we'd go nuts, <laughs> basically, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So at the end now, you guys are going to give us a flavour of what you've got <coughs> a, a piece for us. So what were you going to perform for us today? I'm going to do a, a little spoken word version of the lead single off our current EP. Brilliant. And what's that called? It's called Yeah Fool. Brilliant. Okay, I'll let you take it away then. Cheers. <coughs> this is a song called Yeah Fool. It's a spoken word version and it's a track off our current EP and it's about a midget with gum disease. No fool for love, no fool to cry. Ain't nobody's fool, no fool am I. No fool to the bitch that left you blue. If you're the fool to the rule, then fool to you. Be a fool with your money, just don't get bought. Fool to the law, just don't get caught. Be no fool to a god like saviour. Foolish thoughts, bigger fool's behaviour. And no fool to the lust. Fool to the woman that you just can't trust Fool to promotion, fool to the dough Fool to the booking of an unpaid show No fool to your bankroll, fool to your money Your credit card check, but fat titted honey No fool to your so-called profile height Facebook flirting on your late night Skype No fool for your bullshit, fool for your talk Big balls got a lot of wheelchair walk No fool to your so-called band dedication Loose lips gonna sing ships, why don't you? Be gone little one Run like a chicken in a bad place gone No fool to the rule of your saint like sin We'll wipe the slate clean with the foolish grin Come on We can do this all night We can fuck or we can fight We can take you where we want to baby If you think that we are through Baby girl that's far from true We can take you where we want to babe I'm just a fool for you